Hi, welcome to this lesson in our Intro to Spring Boot series. Uh, we've recently learned about integrating models into our Spring Boot MVC applications, and this lesson is going to focus on looking at how we can validate those models to make sure that the data we're getting from the user um, is, is valid, and so we don't uh, create models with invalid data or data that we don't want. And um, we're familiar with the concept of, of form validation from previous course lessons. Uh, validating things like uh, email format or that a field isn't empty or that password and verify password fields match and uh, so this this is going to give us some nice uh, really basic simple easy to use built-in validation tools that are part of Spring Boot to use in our applications. In order to enable validation within our applications we're going to take three steps. The first is to annotate our model using the Java validation API. This is a standard um, that, that specifies certain annotations you can use on fields in your model classes to specify uh, the validation that should be applied to those. We're also going to have to check within our controllers that our model objects are valid when they're coming in from the view. So for example, last time we looked at model binding and having an object already created for us when a user submits a form, we're going to look at how to make sure that that model object is valid. And then we're also going to look at how we can handle situations where it isn't valid by displaying error messages in the view. And so these are three simple things that we'll look at today to enable validation in our applications. Okay, so let's go back over to IntelliJ. And I'm picking up in IntelliJ right where we left off last time. So uh, just as a reminder, let's kind of clean up our view here. Um, as a reminder, we have a form that lets us create new cheese objects, and we have um, the, the display add cheese form, which just renders the form. And then we have the process add cheese form handler, which will respond to a post request. And we used the model attribute annotation to enable model binding. So this basically said that when we're looking at our templates, let me pull up the add cheese template. Within our add cheese template, we specify the name attributes of our form inputs to correspond or match up with the properties of our model object. So in particular, we had two name attributes on our inputs, name and description, and those matched up exactly with the name attributes on our cheese class. So, or well, the, the property uh, names on our cheese class. We had two properties that we wanted to populate, name and description. And the, the, the framework was able to create that cheese object for us and to um, set the properties, uh, name and description, based on the form values. But it, was, uh, it still allowed the user to submit an empty form to create a cheese with no data whatsoever. So um, while this is nice and this model binding is handy and useful and we'll continue to use it, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't do the validation or it doesn't prevent our, our application from being populated with um, invalid or ugly data. Okay, so the first step in this process is to go to our model class and add annotations to the, the fields that we want to be validated to specify how they should be validated. So in this case, we're going to look at these two fields up here, name and description. And uh, th let's think about what we want to specify, what restrictions we might want to put on these two fields from the, the standpoint of the user. There's a set of standard validation annotations that are specified by something called the Java Validation API that we can use in this setting. And I'll provide a link to uh, a reference for all of those. We're not gonna talk about all of them in the video, but uh, we'll talk about a couple of the most um, useful ones and provide a reference link so you can look up and find others as you uh, have the need to use them within your projects. Um, the first one that we're going to introduce is the not null. And this will specify that this field should not be null when we're validating it. And actually I should go ahead and apply this to description too. Um, and then let's specify furthermore that the name should have at least a certain size. Okay, and I wanna specify that the name should be say at least three characters long and no more than say 15, that seems like a a decent range for the name of a cheese, right? We just wanna make sure that the user doesn't enter something silly like just, you know, the letter A, right? And the description will leave that kind of open-ended for now. 
Okay, so these two validation annotations are going to specify how my object should be validated when we validate it. Um, now, this is not just going to happen automatically. We need to go back to our controller and add a little bit of extra stuff to make this work. And in particular, we want to specify right here where we have the, uh, the model attribute uh, um, annotation, we want to specify that this should be a valid um, object. Okay, so not only is this cheese object being bound as it comes in, in, in other words, it's going to be created for us by the framework and passed to our handler method, but this at valid annotation specifies that when Spring Boot is doing that, it should validate it based on these annotations that we've just provided in the model class itself. Okay, so this will validate it and this will generate some error messages if, um, if the, the model fails validation, but it doesn't really do anything for us um, beyond that. It just kind of checks and stores those messages alongside uh, the object itself. If we want to actually respond to a valid or invalid model object here, we're going to have to do some additional work ourselves. In particular, I'm going to add another attribute to this, um, or another property to this method called errors. Okay, I'm just hitting Alt Enter there to bring up the um, import class suggestion. And so this is a, a parameter that is going to be made available to us when we validate our object. So um, when Spring Boot goes to validate our model, when it sees the at valid annotation, it's going to put any error messages that it finds in this errors object. And so we can use this errors object to check to see whether or not our model was validated properly. And in particular, I can come in here and put a conditional. I can say if errors dot has errors. And that will be a Boolean that specifies whether or not there are any errors in that uh, errors object. If there are errors, I'm going to want to just return to the cheese form again. Okay, so I don't want to add the cheese and redirect. I basically want to do the same thing I did up here when I'm render rendering the form. So I can actually just copy these two lines and put them here. And um, we see when I do that, I have a model. I'm not getting the model in my method here. So let me go in and add that. Okay. So this says that if we find errors, we're going to go back and render the cheese add form. Okay. And uh, hopefully the user will get it right the second time. In order for them to actually get it right, though, we should probably tell them what they did wrong the first time. So let's go to the add cheese form and look at how we can enable um, error handling and error message display in that form. Okay. Uh, and before we actually go about displaying the error messages, I want to do a couple of improvements here that use uh, the model binding and accessibility of the model objects in our form um, to help us render the form. And let's see. Yeah, to do that, I need to actually do one more thing. Let's bounce back to the controller. I got a little ahead of myself there. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our add cheese form handler, display add cheese form. And I want to add another model attribute. And here, I just want to add a new cheese object. Okay, and it's just going to be an empty object. Now that may seem a little bit silly, um, but in fact, by passing this basic object uh, what you th might think of as a skeleton of a cheese object into our um, view here, the view that's going to render to the form, we'll be able to use the properties of this object to help us render the form properly. Okay, so now I can come back here and in my form tag, I want to introduce a new time leaf tag here. It's th object. And I used um, cheese here to pull in this particular item. So notice that in my model.add attribute, um, I didn't use a key value sort of, um, sort of syntax. I just passed it in an object. This is equivalent to basically doing this. If I don't pass in an object with a corresponding named key, the key that it will be available under within the view is going to be by default the name of the class, just in all lowercase. So the, this is equivalent to this. So just introduce that little bit of syntax. 
Uh, and so when I'm in my view, I can access it here. And so when I say th object, this basically says within this form element, I want to work with this particular object. And so I'm going to only work with this object within this form element. And then I can use this object within the form element to help generate my input uh, elements properly. So when we, uh, when, when we were in this label input pair previously, we had to be very meticulous about how we created these attributes and the values, the ID and the type and the name um, and all that stuff. We had to be very careful about how we did that. Um, and if we use this object along with a couple of time leaf tags, we'll actually be able to do this a little bit easier and get away with um, some, uh, some, some, you know, using less syntax. So let me show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe out this four and I'm going to wipe out these three attributes here. And I'm going to say that I want this to be um, a form field. And within here, instead of using dollar sign curly brace, I'm going to use asterisk curly brace. And then I'm going to specify that this should be for the name attribute of the object that I'm working with within my form. So this asterisk, this is similar to the dollar sign, but it says use the, the name attribute of the currently scoped object, of the object that's tied to this form using the th object. Okay, so it's just a little shorthand. And then here, I just want to say for equals name. And I need to add the th to that. Okay, so that will generate our, the rest of those attributes for us based on the properties of this name field. And I can do the same thing down here below. I can say th colon for description. And then I can wipe out these and say th colon field asterisk curly brace description. Okay. So now we don't have to worry about being as meticulous. This is going to generate ID and name attributes on our form elements for us so we don't have to worry as, about being as meticulous in creating those and then once i've done this i can easily add in a place to display error messages associated with the name and description fields if either of those don't validate and let me go just uh, right below the input and let me make a span and i want to say uh, th colon errors and then within this, I just want to, again, specify that I'm working with the name field here. And you might do something like put a class equals error on this. That way you could style it in a specific way, say with some, with some red styling. We might do that in a minute. And then I basically want to do the same thing below here, but for the description field. And so I'll copy paste and change this. Okay. And so just to reiterate, this span, if there is an error associated with the name field, it will display right here in the span. And if there's an error associated with the description field, it will display here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up our application and um, see how we did. Okay, so here I browse to just the main view for my app. Let's go ahead and go to the add form. And uh, let's just try to submit this in an empty way. So this should catch an error. You know, we specified in our back in our model that our name field must not be null and must only be between three and 15 characters. So let's just submit this and see what happens. There we go. So we have this nice error message. This error message was generated for us by Spring Boot based on these validation rules. And it said that size must be between three and 15. Um, and it's displayed right there. Um, again, I added an error class. We didn't actually do anything with that. We might do that in a second. It would be nice to display this in a, in a red font or something to draw attention to it. Um, notice that we did not get an error message associated with the description though. So back here, we specified that our description should be not null. 
and we didn't get an error message saying that there was a problem with that. And it turns out that, you know, having not null on here when, when a string should be not null is a great thing to do, but when you're submitting form data and you have an empty form field, what's actually going to be passed to the server is an empty string. And so this description, in this case, we didn't get a validation message, not because um, that, you know, that string was, you know, actually had some content, but because it was an empty string as opposed to a null string. So if we want to specify that the description shouldn't be empty, we need to do actually something slightly additional and say that the size, min size, should be equal to, say, one. Okay? And just one other thing I want to show you here is when you're in your validation annotations, you can specify a message that will be a custom display message. When, when we um, saw the message associated with the name field, it was pretty generic and maybe not as helpful. And so we can specify a custom message using this message um, key value pair. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's just quickly restart. Since we made some changes to our Java classes and we'll test this out and we'll make sure that we're, we're seeing these validated properly. We're seeing the error messages displayed properly. And then we'll try to submit some valid data and see if that portion works. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's try to submit this empty form. All right now I got both error messages. I got this one. This is same, the same generic auto-generated error message. This one is the custom error message. Let's go ahead and fix these validation issues. And there we go. Since we validated, we are, our data met the validation rules. The controller went ahead and created the class. So it checked to see if there were any errors. There weren't. So it created the uh, object, rather. I said class. I meant object. Created the new cheese object and added that to the data store. Okay, so that's the basics of validation in um, Spring Boot and validating your model classes. Just to recap, the three steps are to add validation annotations to the fields in your model. This is step one. The next step is to validate those models within the controllers where they're being created. Uh, and in particular, you want to add the at valid annotation to locations where you're binding the model to a handler parameter, as we did here. When the form is submitted, we have this new cheese object created. We want to make sure that that's valid. We can then check to ensure that it's valid. And if not, we can do some action. Typically, that's going to be the same action that you used when you rendered the form. And then within our templates, we modified our templates to um, not only display the error messages, but we also improved them by using an object that was passed in, an empty cheese object, an empty model object, to help generate some of the form fields using th field. Um, and while we were doing that, we used th errors to add in our uh, any any error messages that might come in with this. Okay, so in the next lesson, we'll look at um, adding another layer of complexity and some additional features to our model classes and forms and validation.